there are uh, positive coping strategies there are maladaptive coping strategies so there are you know adolescents who try to get into substance use take alcohol cigarette or different kind of substances this is maladaptive but in their own way they try to cope up some people you know go to their friends they start distracting themselves some people go to gym some people uh, get into some kind of intense physical activity go for a run or jog so one thing that we have to understand here is that from yoga point of view we consider emotion as a kind of a energy you know it is energy in motion now this energy has developed a tendency of moving towards a certain direction and when this breakup happens what happens is that energy now can no longer move towards that towards that object and now when this accumulated energy within you is continuously accumulating uh, it is like a a wild elephant you know which you find it difficult to control it compulsively makes you crave for the person and do and makes you do certain activities which you do not want to do say for example if the person you are in relationship tells you that i need some space okay, but the emotional energy that is coming within you by force you know makes you text that person or call that person this irritates the other person even more so so it is all about number one thing is becoming self aware becoming aware that you have this kind of a energy within you which is not coming under your control and which he has gained control over you now so you have to first and foremost become aware that um you are being overpowered by some kind of a energy in fact you know uh, the adolescents are very fond of games so if they you know take it in a lighter mode and see that this energy itself within them which is creating a restlessness restlessness and uh, pain in them in the form of a game you know in a form of a thing that okay what is this within me which i don't know about and which is pulling me into something and i have no control over myself so so like you control a wild animal in that way they start looking at this own emotional energy within themselves um, as a kind of a thing that they want to understand and win over you know so bhagavad gita also emphasizes this point that an individual should try to manage his mind in a friendly way because if the mind of the individual becomes enemy to him then such a person gets destroyed so first and foremost is you become self aware what is happening within me when i am getting an urge to meet that person to crave that for that person what is going on and and when i am texting that person or when i am calling him what kind of anxiety is building up in me what fear do i have i have a fear that if this person goes away my life will be completely ruined you know i am i am nothing without this person in my life so that kind of a thing when it builds up it generates lot of anxiety in the adolescents and they eagerly wait for their reply their and they keep checking their mobile again and again and this generates even more anxiety so this is a a a kind of a uh, crisis situation now let us look at the ancient text what do they say in fact as you get into a relationship there is a beautiful sequence of shlokas that come in the second chapter of bhagavad gita so krishna says dhyayato vishayan pumsah sangasteshu pajayate so when we enter into this kind of a relationship we are not aware what happens is we keep on contemplating on the sense uh, objects uh, and the sense organ touching those objects you know you want to hear that voice you want to feel the presence of that person around you and slowly you only don't realize when you develop this attachment now after the sangha after the attachment sanghat sanjayate kamah then slowly over a period of time you know you see that this attachment becomes a intense desire from the line that you repeat in your mind i like him i like him you start saying i love him then it comes i can't live without him you know so it becomes more and more strong in and and what is the force that pulls it you we only in our mind again and again again and again build up those circuits in us 
and they become deeper and deeper and then when this the this desire becomes intense and strong any stoppage of that desire leads to lot of krodha and with that krodha you know comes clouding of the judgment krodha bhavati sammoha clouding of the judgment means one we completely forget what is our role you know uh, how would our parents feel or the people who trust us feel about it what action are we going to do or you know what good also this person has done to me okay we are breaking up now but what were the good memories that we spent we forget all that you know and the anger overpowers our memory and sammoha smriti vibhramaha the memory goes away and then smriti bhramshad buddhi nasha then our viveka our ability to discriminate what is to be done what is not to be done goes away and the person falls buddhi nasha pranashchati falls from his state and gets destroyed so this is the sequence of how the emotions go and how a person gets destroyed you know so the key message here is that even when you are into a relationship or you are entering into a relationship it is always better to remain self aware how much of me or my control have i handed over already to the other person you know it is the relationship means what that i first anchor myself within myself and then i extend a hand to another so that we support each other relationship does not mean that you completely forget yourself leave your own anchor within you and fall off onto another person so that he abuses you know you give your complete control to another only when you have no sense of self or sense of you know concretization or establishment within yourself so bhagavad gita warns us against losing our own self esteem you know in this situation then when you look at patanjali's yoga sutra patanjali defines raga raga is the word that is used for craving and he says sukha anushayi raga attraction to pleasant experience results in craving so what do we do we have some kind of pleasant experience and we start replaying those kind of you know situations again and again again and again in our mind and that increases our craving more and more whereas what happens when you have a dvesha dvesha is hatred comes with an unpleasant experience so when you have an, an unpleasant experience and you play that again and again in your mind you develop an hatred now this is very critical uh, dear friends here that these two people they are in a phase of a relationship where one person wants the other person and the other person does not want this person now the other person who does not want this person has a dvesha towards this and this fellow who wants this person very badly has a raga towards this so one is in a state of dvesha other is in a state of raga so there is a cognitive bias a cognitive error that takes place in the mind whenever you are in a state of dvesha or whenever you are in a state of raga what is that cognitive error the cognitive error is the person who is in a state of dvesha only remembers the unpleasant experiences and therefore develops hatred so in your relationship say say i have a relationship of more than 2 years or 5 years and we had pleasant experiences together and we had unpleasant experiences together so the person who is in a in a state of withdrawal from the relationship has only the memory of unpleasant experiences and he keeps on rewinding only those memories and that makes him repulsive against this person whereas a person from whom this person is going away he in his mind keeps on rewinding only the pleasant experiences and he forgets about the unpleasant experiences and that's why he starts craving for the other person more and more but what is the fact the fact is that both of them are in a state of a flux in a state of a cognitive bias which is not going to last so the person who is in a state of hatred you know if this person who is craving for him he wants to go closer to him he is trying to attempt to go close to him if he stops going to that person 
he gives him space naturally the memory of the unpleasant experiences will fade away and now the the pleasant memories will start coming up depending on how much time the other person gives the pleasant memories would then come up and then this person the level of dvesha or hatred that he has this will come down it has to come down this is a law whereas this other person you know who is having so much of attraction to this person now because he is only rewinding the pleasant experiences in his mind if you know this person is accepted by that other person that okay you come back into relationship once again he will see that because now that person has 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 accepted him the pleasant memories now will start fading away and the unpleasant memories will once again come up and this person will once again start taking the other fellow granted so in this way in a relationship two people without getting a proper understanding of what is going on within them actually what is happening is that he is on a wave of raga and this other person is on a wave of dvesha neither the raga is going to last neither the dvesha is going to last in fact you know we can actually use this as a tool what happens in your life how your ego plays whenever a person pours his attention and love on you you start taking it for granted and only the unpleasant aspect of that person become visible to you whereas as soon as that person withdraws away from you you start getting only the memory of his positive experiences and all his unpleasant experiences you start ignoring but what should you do is when that person is ignoring you do not ignore the unpleasant experiences you had with that person become rational in your memory and bring you yourself actively bring those unpleasant experiences on the surface of your mind and tell yourself that probably you know it is not that i only do not deserve that person probably he or she also doesn't deserve me you know so because why that person is having so much strength to ignore you because he is now playing only with your unpleasant experiences so if you also start playing playing with the unpleasant experiences about that person you will gain a strength to at least remain in the center at least remain in the middle and on the other extreme you know when the other person accepts you or comes back do not become egoistic or now start bringing the unpleasant experiences but bring the positive experiences also so when somebody loves you keep the memory of positive experiences in your mind when somebody moves away from you also bring the unpleasant experiences about that person in your mind in this way you can come out of the smriti bhramsha you can use your memory rationally and be and you will be able to maintain an state of equilibrium even if the person is coming back or he is going away when he is coming back you will not be too excited when he is going away you will not go down the drain you know so this is something that we learn from patanjali's yoga sutra also you know again in another shloka bhagavad gita says that when all these indriyas whenever they touch the sense object raga dvesho vyavasthito it is inbuilt in our senses whenever they touch the object the emotions of raga and dvesha keep coming and therefore we should not get controlled by them vasham agachchato we should not be governed by our senses in fact we should be able to regulate our senses because these are paripanthino these are the obstacles on the path of growth in another shloka you know uh, krishna says that that everybody told here in the meeting that these are temporary things the very emotion that you are riding on it very high very confidently you are so confident that you will you will be able to stay without this person but you yourself will be in a situation where your emotion will once again make you a fool and you will realize that you can't be with the, without that person or now that you are feeling that i can't live without that person and this is in another way that your emotions are making a fool out of you because when the very person that you are dying for marries you you only take divorce so so this is a situation 
that these emotions of raga and dvesha keep coming and going but we should not be controlled by them like the seasons keep coming and going these emotions keep changing so krishna tells arjuna that tan titikshasva bharata o oh arjuna please learn to endure them because heat and cold summer and winter this is the nature of the experiences that we get when the sense organ touches the sense object and the emotion that they generate so krishna says that your intellect and your atman your self is much subtle and more powerful than the senses and the emotions that are attached to them so finally you know krishna says this beautiful shloka in the 6th chapter he says udhareed atmana atmanam na atmanam avasadayet atmaiva yatmano bandhu atmaiva ripuratmana elevate yourself through the power of your own mind and do not degrade yourself do not feel that your existence is only up to sense organ and its attachment to the sense objects you are much beyond that who else is going to support you in this crisis if not you yourself you know so find the strength within you and it is very much there within you you are just not aware of it so in this way through this life situations we should learn to handle ourselves and do not allow ourselves to be destroyed by these transient fleeting emotions thank you thank you very much namaste namaste sir thank you very much very nice sir